Hi everyone, I'm Glenda with Surefit Designs, commonly referred to as Glenda the Good Stitch. Today I'd like to focus on the skirt front dart. That's this dart right here. And what happens to it when we start sewing it together with the bodice front. Now, this dart, if I can reference the master pattern, is this dart right here. And in order to line up the skirt front with the bodice front, we have what I've called sideways T markings, and you can see them that I've done them in that deep pink color. On the master pattern, that's this line, this sideways T marking right here. Now, to draw this skirt front dart inside the SureFit Designs dress kit, we have a waist darts template, and I've used skirt front dart, that's dart number two, and when you draw your dart, the template aims downward, and the width of the dart, of course, is at the waistline, and this dart needs to position directly underneath the waist-fitting dart from the bodice front pattern. Now, when you go to sew this together, some people, when they're testing their bodice and skirt, they do the two pieces independently and then later on sew it together. Other people go right into testing with the skirt, sewn together with the bodice. And where you're going to find that is on page 14 of your dress kit instruction book. Now, as we take a look at this illustration, you'll see that the skirt hip fitting dart aligns directly underneath the waist fitting dart in the bodice. And that's the way it should be. Now we're going to take a look at some examples of garments that have been done in the testing stage. And the dart doesn't look very good. And of course, with SureFit designs, our intention always is to get the best fit that we can for your bodies. So we're going to take a look at some of these examples. Example number one, you are going to see that the waist fitting dart looks good at the waistline, but this dart poofs out at the bottom point of the dart, at the tip of the dart, and, <coughs> excuse me, that's on the right hand side. On the left hand side, it's indented. What those, that little poof and that indent means is that the skirt dart is too long for the body. And as we take a look at another one, this one very definitely is too long. She's very flat in the front, and you can see how long the dart is and that it's all poofing. So what she really needs is two smaller darts and, of course, shorter darts. Let's take a look at example number three, and you'll see something similar. You can see the way the light is playing on the photograph here and that this dart is flipping outward. So this is another example. She's a, a larger lady than my last couple of examples, but she's still basically flat in the front. And what's happening is the dart is too long and it's too wide for her body. And let's take a look at one more example. This is a lady who actually didn't sew the full skirt. She just did the half bodice um, excuse me, the full bodice with a half skirt. And you can see once again that the dart is poofing out and you can tell that by the way the hemline is hanging. So there's too much fullness coming from the tip of the dart. This dart would be far better on her body to be a little bit shorter and to be divided in half to get two narrower darts. So that's what I'm going to show you today. So going and taking a look at the skirt front joined together with the bodice front, this dart is an inch and a half wide. Now you can measure your template, you can also measure what you've done on your pattern. So from one side of the dart to the other, that is exactly an inch and a half. And how I made sure that these darts were one lined up right underneath the others, yes we have a series of dots on the master pattern, where the tip of the dart lines up together. But you can also ensure that these darts are lining one directly on top of the other by using your line drafter. And in this case, the apex 
is four inches away from center front and so I have made a green line as you can see down the center of the darts to ensure that one is lining up underneath the other so that when these darts are sewn together we do get the image that is in the surefit the instruction book all right so now what I want to do is divide this dart in half so basically because this is an inch and a half wide half of that is three quarters of an inch and if we take three quarters and divide that in half that's three eighths of an inch so that means that from the center of the dart I want to mark out three eighths of an inch there and three eighths of an inch here so the total width of this dart is going to be three quarters of an inch wide the center line is still the center line but now what do we do with the rest of the space for that dart? Well, we are going to put it over between this waist fitting dart and the side seam. So now, just to ensure that nothing shifts, I'm going to just put a couple little pieces of tape here to tape that down, and I'm going to pull in another piece of tracing vellum where I have basically got this initially set up. So here is my sideways T marking and I will position that in place and I'm going to put a little piece of tape here but I am going to be removing that pretty quickly here. So once again you're going to see these green lines indicating the center of the dart are one right on top of the other. And what I've done is I've narrowed the dart. So now I'm going to draw that narrow dart for you and I'm going to draw it in red. Right now I've just penciled everything in. So from the green line to the red line that's three-eighths of an inch and three-eighths of an inch on the other side. And I'm using my curved T-square edge here because this is such a handy ruler to pick up. This is one of our newest tools of course is that curved T-square and I'm just using that to draw the edges of the dart. And I am doing that in red so that it really stands out against the blue dart. Now, what do you do with the space? As I said, you can put a secondary dart in here, which is the process I'm going to show you. Now, some of those photographs that I showed you at the beginning, the dart tip needed to be shortened. So I have shortened this dart tip about half an inch. It could be a little bit shorter, but for the sake of demonstration, you'll see that I've shortened it a little bit. So then, if we take a look at the grain line markings on the board underneath, you can see that there's a grain line marking, here's a grain line marking. So what I've done from this tip, the shortened tip, to this tip, is I've come up approximately one inch. Now you may ask where and how do you position this dart and how do you know how to do that? Well it's going to be based on your body. If you have a protruding hip bone it might be at a slight angle. Rarely do you angle it inward but it definitely can be straight or at a slight angle. And I'm also going to ensure that in this case the center of my dart this green line and I'm moving here a little bit so let me just put a tiny little piece of tape there and the center of this dart are 100 percent parallel because in this demonstration I am not going to angle the dart so I'll do that center line in green there we have it. Now, use your curved T-square and measure from the center line out three-eighths of an inch on either side of your center line. So now I know that that width of this dart is three-quarters, this one is three-quarters, and that uses up the full amount of the original dart which was an inch and a half. So now I have placed my secondary dart midway between 
the first dart and the side seam. Now we need to address what is going to happen when, I'll pull this illustration out again, when you sew your skirt to your bodice, what happens with this half width dart that you've made? Well, it's actually going to shift it out of position. And that's because I've made the dart narrower. So what we really want to line up here, in order to make those center lines be one right on top of the other, is I really need to line up my stitching line. So I'm going to just remove the tape and I'm going to shift the skirt pattern over until though the red line of the dart lines up exactly with the blue line of the bodice fitting dart. All right? And what that does to center front is it shifts it over 3 eighths of an inch. Remember it was 3 eighths of an inch that I basically moved the dart in. So it's the same 3 eighths of an inch over here. So rather than using the original blue center front, this was the original and I just did it in pencil, now center front needs to move in and this distance is, I'm writing this upside down for you, sorry about that, but that's 3 eighths of an inch. Now I'm going to draw that in red so that it lines up directly and this is shifted just a little bit. It's really important that these positions remain where they're supposed to. So now we come straight down. There's the center front of the bodice and I'm coming in 3 eighths of an inch like this and now that's the new center line for the skirt front. I'm going to put the center front right there. And I'll just mark this as skirt front too. All right, now the side seam, look what happened. As I move the skirt over so that these lines, these stitching lines would line up one underneath the other, then it pulled the side seam over as well. So I don't want to um, neglect that. So now we're just going to draw the side seam. It's exactly the same shape. I'm not changing anything. But now, from here, it actually got shifted over 3 eighths of an inch because I shifted that center front over 3 eighths of an inch. And then you can finish drawing that slightly curved edge that is on the top of the uh, skirt pattern. And that's how easy it is to divide the dart in half, shorten the second dart a little bit, and ensure that when you sew the skirt together with the bodice, that now, because this is a skinnier dart and this is a wider dart, that when sewn together, that green line is going to line up with that green fold line on the waist-fitting dart on the bodice. So I hope that all made sense to you. And it is important that you understand why we had to shift the skirt, that 3 eighths of an inch. But I also wanted to mention to you that a couple of years ago, we did another video called Divining the Dart. And there, I showed you a number of different things that you could do with this skirt dart. Shortening it, lengthening it, stitching it in a concave curve or a convex curve, and of course, making two darts like this. And um, what I'm going to do is give you a link to that dart, uh, to that skirt video, excuse me, to the dart video. I'm going to give you that link in the show more notes so that you can go and watch that too because it gives you just that much more information and knowledge about this skirt dart. And now I'd like to show you a finished skirt and it's of course it's joined together with the bodice 
This is hard to see in this photograph, but you can see how much nicer the front of the skirt looks because there is the longer dart that is lined up right underneath the bodice fitting dart and here's her secondary dart right here. I know it's hard to see because of the lighting on the the way that the photograph was taken but there are two darts here and you can see how much nicer the front of the skirt looks. So there's a purpose in doing it and I hope that those of you who have some of this going on will be able to modify your skirt pattern again to get the best fit possible on your body. So thank you so much for watching today. I encourage you to join our SureFit Designs community and you can do that by joining our uh, newsletter. Go to surefitdesigns.com and sign up for the newsletter where you'll have um, monthly information, all the new things that are happening in SureFit Designs. As well, I encourage you to subscribe, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have close to 400 videos now for your learning benefit. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.